I'm sure you all recognize me from the Jerry Rig movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought that was a really good documentation, documentary that you put together on a very important issue, and it makes me feel so good the fact that so many of you here on this topic. I've talked about this for years when most people were saying, what's gerrymandering or what's redistricting? But simply had no notion of it. But the little point I want to make, and I'm not going to take much time, the point I want to make is to say to you that when I first came here in 1978, I was in a term, and then I came back in 1982. What happened at that point in time was that the court uh, interjected itself in Virginia's redistricting because historically, Virginia, as you may know, goes back to the 60s and Baker versus Carr, one on one vote, uh, because Virginia's uh, districts were so out of kilter. And I had an interest in Northern Virginia, as most of the suburban areas did, by trying to wrest some legislative power from the country boys. But the thing happening that happened in uh, 1982 was that the courts threw out the Virginia redistricting, and those redistricting lines were drawn with a lot of multi-member districts. I was elected in a five-member at-large district. Uh, rather than deal with the issue about drawing up the district, they kind of lump everybody together uh, in a district. The courts threw that out in 1982, I was elected in a three-member district, court threw that out, and in 1984, I was elected in a single-member district, which has continued to today. But what that brought to my attention, and I want to make sure that you understand, I was one of 75 Democrats in the 100-member House of Delegates, and what I saw going on was an emphasis on preserving the Democrats in control of the legislature. Mm -hmm. I saw legislators draw districts that were safe for themselves, and guess what? Although there were lots of complaints to them, when the other guys took over, they started doing the same darn thing. <laughs> so that in the 90s and uh, 2000 and so on, we saw again this emphasis on picking your voters rather than have the voters pick you. So I introduced Bill in 1982, as before Sam was born. <laughs> <laughs> that said we should develop a process outside of our individually trying to draw, to draw district lines. That we should have not simply a statement about districts being contiguous, compact, and com all those terms and so on, but we should have a process that took it away from legislators who by their instinctive nature are going to do what you see them doing, and that's protect themselves. Sometimes that works out to the advantage of constituents, but so oftentimes it's the overriding consideration. And when it's the overriding consideration, we get the situation we get now where there are fewer contested races and there's less discussion of issues and so on. So I applaud you for coming to understand, as a member of Common Cause, incidentally, in, in back in the 80s, brought to my attention this whole issue. The fact that you're coming to, uh, aware of this and you're working to make sure it happens. And I plead with you, too, to continue to work with your legislators to make sure that we don't get some pablum. We don't want some statement saying we're not going to have political redistricting. We want a process in place to ensure that we get fair districts drawn by impartially and representing people, uh, not the uh, legislators picking people they want to represent. So bless you for being here. So glad for the work that you're doing.